Okay, welcome to the third video where I talk about um, some sketches for blocks and layouts uh, for Drupal 8 and stuff. Um, my name is Johan Falk, I'm in Sweden, Stockholm. The uh, sun is shining and I have a cup of tea next to the computer. So, very quickly, uh, this is uh, some kind of editor for creating customized block or editing customized block blocks. Um, this is a blank uh, block uh, just uh, created. You have no name for it, so you need to set that before you can save. You have a simple layout, one column, um, no, no extra markup, no, no fancy stuff. And you have this uh, link or button or something for adding new content to your custom block. And if you hit that, you get some, I, I suspect some kind of pop-up or a modal frame or something. And I envision this similar to the, the views interface when you add fields and, and filters and stuff, uh, because that, that kind of works well. It's, it's overwhelming at times, but it's manage, uh, well, it allows you to manage a lot of data and, and filter through it and stuff. And that's kind of useful. Uh, so I envision a search box where you can search for, it, for the name or description of, of blocks that you want to add to your custom block, uh, filter by type, and then you get a lot, uh, long list of stuff and if you uh, click any of them uh, you get when possible a preview of that block if uh, the block requires uh, extra input some some con well contextual data or, or special configuration then it might not be possible to have a preview but that's uh, maybe a special case um, I also have this checkbox, checkbox here saying restrict results uh, by available data. Uh, in this case, the, the example I'm working with, in the previous screencast, uh, we set up a page with a node being a part of, a node ID being part of the path. And that means that in, on this page, you'll have a node as, as uh, available data. And here, for example, you have a view called related content that re requires a node as input. We don't really know this, but I set up it that way, set it up that way. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, view here is listed here because it, uh, well, we have a node available. If we didn't have a node avail available and this checkbox here would be checked, uh, this part would not be listed. I think you get the idea. Uh, well, select something, browse something, uh, view front page, hit add and you'll uh, get it into your uh, block, your custom block that you're building um, with its configuration open. In this case you have only one piece of configuration, the number of rows to display. That can vary uh, greatly between different blocks, but this was a simple one. You can enter something you want here and hit save. You can also see we have some kind of icon here that I will talk more about later on. And that's it. When possible, uh, in, in this uh, block layout editor, uh, you get previews of the actual content that you have in your block. It's kind of confusing that you have blocks in your block, uh, but that's how life is, I guess. Um, yeah, and that's it. Let's see. Yeah, you can continue and add stuff. Uh, in this case, I've changed the layout as well, and I've changed the block name, and I've added some content here. You can also see I've added a user presentation here uh, that says missing settings. And I'm going to talk more about that in the next video where I talk about contextual data and what I call uh, dynamic data or dynamic configuration. Uh, yeah, see you there.